when you raise in the nature mind, then is the rikpa, the nature mind, itzal, itself raising begin to, uh, you know, shirap namje, it begin to <laughs> emanate. So then, not only you begin to know the ultimate nature, but the master spin, you got to know the even tell stories is better, and know all the things you begin to know. I mean, in the, in the case of Nyushin Kenan, which I remember one master called Chandra Rinpoche, they studied together. But they studied together, not the same master, but I don't know what happened to Nyamyan Doji, Nyamyan Doji, the name of Nyushin Kenan. Yet suddenly, just something happened to be completely became, reached to a completely different league. That's when you opened up the dimension of, you know, that not only you come to know the ultimate, you know all the knowledges. That's wisdom. So that complete the six parameters in a complete way. That is the generation bodhicitta, but in a really in a um, basically, you know, you remember all sentient beings. I am like your mother, you know, connect from per moment when the suffering how can it possibly you know rest so therefore very much whenever we practice we not practice just for ourselves we always practice that's why the special thing about our dharma that whatever we do we will dedicate it for the complete night moment you know really not only just say I want them to be free from suffering or have happiness. That's only, but that's only uh, for measurables. But really, complete enlightenment. Really, it's always that's what. Whenever you do, you really dedicate. I mean, fact is that you realize that you know you have Buddha nature, and that all beings do too. But then you. Uh, through the great good fortune of having met uh, the teachings and the great masters, so that you want to strive to really attain enlightenment for the all sentient beings. And the one element is that really saying that I shall single handedly bring about enlightenment all beings. Very much. It's not only the vision, but a tremendous courage. But the thing is that when, I mean, difficult some is in a practical thing, how can you? bring about enlightenment all beings. But when you start thinking in this way, then your courage and vision begin to increase. Then you begin to be a big, big things. So the motivation and the Asim Bodhicitta is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And really wishing that whatever you do, practice you do, you dedicate. Whatever good things you do, you put the dedicate to the ultimate enlightenment all beings. And it couldn't get more simpler and practical than what Rimocha just shared with us. Thank you. What comes to mind is even His Majesty, la. he shares with us uh, every time he's meeting the graduates or in any gathering, he tells the people that it is one thing to love your country, but to love your country intelligently. His Majesty is very extraordinary, his vision, and I feel so moved that he's always so, he's got a tremendous energy and he's really, I mean, he travels all the country and see people, talk to them, listen to a need, I mean, what more compassion, loving, than this is? And thank you. Know, I really feel it's like a graduate is going to be a great Chujidyalpo. Should we progress further on to the Vajrasattva okay. recitation? So next, now, now when we come into the Vajrasattva next, then we come to the Vajrayana. Traditionally, you receive an empowerment of Vajrasattva at the big beginning. Empowerment, Wang, Abhisheka, then you. Now the Vajrasattva, then you see, after having generated bodhicitta, then you realize that, well, basically, you need to purify. I mean, if you want to have to bring the night more beings, you need to first purify your, your digpa and jiba, obscuration, you need to purify. And then you need to accumulate merit and wisdom. So, purifying your all negative karma is, is the Vajrasattva, Dorsem Jibja. And accumulating merit and wisdom is actually man's offering. In fact, actually, this can be connected with the four dharmas of Gambopa. 
Lo chusun doa chinji lo, chulam dun doa chinji lo, lam chuba hi pa chinji lo, chunai hi chawa chinji lo. There's a very famous prayer by Gambopa, who is the heart disciple of Milarepa. I mean, Milarepa disciples were two principles, Rechungpa and Gambopa. Gambopa really felt, kind of held the main, kind of the monastic tradition of the lineage of. And he's the four dhammas of Gambopa, grant your blessing so that my mind may turn toward the Dharma. That actually Lodo Namhi. Grant your blessings. Lo chusun drawa chu lam dun drawa chin chul. Lo lam chu lam dun drawa chin. Grant your blessings so the Dharma may progress along the path or Dharma may become successful in my life. Is actually taking refuge and generous bodhicitta. Grant your blessing so that part and may clarify confusion. You know, uh, grant your blessing so the part and practice may clarify confusion. Lam trua hi pa That is actually Vajrasila purification and mandal offering. And finally, grant your blessings so that confusion may dawn to wisdom. Trua hi pa is the Guru Yoga. And these are the great uh, Mahamudra masters, they always. In fact, something incredible about Dzogchen, the, in the, the Mahamudra, the many great masters, they teach them in like a union of. In fact, there's a wonderful saying from Longjin Dingwondo in the Dakini practice of Yumka Desen Jamo, in the lineage process, you know, it says, Chaozu Ye Mei The union of Mahamudra Dzogpa Chenbo is the actual face of the Dakini. It's very beautiful. And so that very much like that. So that you see to purify all our negative karma, destructive emotions really is the practice. We need Dibajan to purify ourselves. And so the hence the practice of Vajrasattva. Now in order to do this Dibja, we need four powers. Power of presence or power of the object of the presence. Whenever you use an object to purify you, like when you take a shower. You need a good water that can uh, uh, purify you, isn't it? It will wash you, you know, it's a, it's a good, can cleanse you like that. It's a very bad example, but, you know, so it's like the, the, the power of presence. That's uh, the Vajrasattva. Next is power of regret. Repentance, that's very important. First is called the power of support also. Power of object or power of support. The second is power of regret. Third is power of resolution. So the once you're purified, once you've repented, then you really take a pledge that you never want to commit again. You need really have to truly mean it. If you're truly regretful that you will not only confess, but then, you know, openly, you know, but that you will not commit them again, there's a resolution. You know, just like, you know, if you have a regret, it should be said that if you take it, just, just swallow the poison, you know. That sense of tremendous remorse. And then thirdly is the actual practice or the, you know, practice of antidote or the actual practice of the nectar flow. Dutsumbejan. So here in the case of what's amazing is that, you know, the Lama actually becomes the Vajrasattva. So all this Lama is the central. Lama is embodied in the refuge is Lama at the central. The Lama here becomes the Lama Vajrasattva. It's something amazing. If the Lama is, you know, Lama is the source of blessings. If the Lama is all, it's like when you do Yidam practice also very much, especially Yidam deity is powerful like Vajrakilaya. You know, if you consider the, as the Lama becomes the Vajrakilaya, then you practice the particularly like powerful practice like without less obstacle, more auspicious. You understand? That's very special. From Kensington himself, this great master. I think I have gathered. I have, as I said, I, I'm not. To, I, I'm not to really anyway learn it, nor uh, realize it. But I had the great fortune of met many great masters. From there, I received many kind of the, the crucial points of the Menga teachings, which really are so amazing. They just opened up all the doors, and really make profound things really simple 
And because I needed that, I needed that very much, and I kind of was very interested in that. So I needed that, and it was very helpful, and it was so joyful to discover that. So that when I share these things enthusiastically like this, I think people really help them. They, uh, so it's really, I think, a wonderful thing, it's greatest, greatest joy and honor to teach the Dharma, really. It's so wonderful, really. It's such an honor, it's such a privilege. And so fortunate. That's why when you even share teaching like that, we gain tremendous merit, tremendous power. And we dedicate for the ultimate enlightenment of all beings. And then we can dedicate for the world peace, especially conflict like in, in the Ukraine the struggle, as well as all the ISIS and all these are pretty dangerous, pretty volatile what's in the Middle East. We need to think of all this, what's happening, you know. And also we need to think of people like, you know, the, those who've just died in the air crash, the German wing. And the news, are very, when you watch the news, is a wonderful opportunity to practice compassion also, very much. Dedicate, very much. And so, um, in the practice of Vajrasattva, then and we just spoke about the four uh, strengths. The four yes, these are the four strengths. But I now come to one by one. Yeah. First is you invoke Vajrasattva, who is the embodiment of the, you know, Vajrasattva, Doji Sempa. I translate as the um, embodiment of the indestructible energy of enlightenment. It's like the purity of all the Buddhas, healing power of Buddhas. In fact, it is said that Vajrasattva, when he was a Bodhisattva, I mean, only he's on a Sambhavaki life, but uh, sometimes he said it, Vajrasattva, on the, when he embarked on the path of a Bodhicitta, when he first took the Bodhisattva vow, embarked on, you know, the path of enlightenment, he dedicated that. When I become enlightenment, may the power of my enlightenment be, whoever meditates on me, recite my essence, the mantra, may he or she be purified. So when he, he became the Buddha, it enlightenment, power of such is that when you invoke, the, because power of the truth of his enlightenment is very powerful. So that's why, and on one hand, that another hand is Vajrasattva in the Vajrayana. He's the chief of all the mandalas. He is also the Sambhokai Buddha, the ultimate Buddha, Pramoji Buddha, you know, or Vajradhara, or Doji Chang, or Kunta Sampu, you know, that will manifest on the Sambhokai level. Also, it's interesting, it is said that Dhammakaya is Dhammakaya, is Samantabhadra. Dhammakaya is Sambhokai, is Vajradhara. Dhammakaya is Nimanakaya, is Vajrasattva. And so Vajrasattva, he is really, in a sense, he's, the, you know, Sambhoka is a dimension of, you know, it's like a beyond, you know, it's like a, it's like, I don't know, it's so difficult, it's really a dimension. That's why sometimes, because in that dimension of Sambhoka, all the deities are. In ordinarily, you don't find these kind of deities walking around in the street anyway, except Sometimes when Master said, interesting, when you look at like a star, star walls or, you know, you see the, all these different kind of beings they depict, you know, in different planets, who knows how the peoples may be, you know, so it's the possibility. We only know the limited, how human beings, that round or some animals, but, you know, there may be other these like that, you know, so. So that what is depicted in the dimension of the Sambhoka field in the teachings is like not altogether just a fabrication, it could be a, it could be a reality, particular reality in the dimension of Sambhoka field. The Vajrasattva is the really, is the enlightened, you know, I think the, even in interesting, in the Christianity, the medium of healing through the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is, if you relate the Trinity a little bit to the uh, according to the three kayas, there is, I mentioned that in the 
last chapter 21, I think, is universe process. There, there is some kind of linkage between, roughly, it's not the same. Sometimes something similar is not necessarily the same. Huh? That's very important, this logic. Similar, the, like the Godfather is something like the ultimate. And the, how the Godfather incarnate in the person of Christ is through the medium of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is the Sambhokaya. And then through Sambhokaya, you manifest as Nirmanakaya. It's like you can relate that. Because that's how I remember I said that I came to re appreciate Christianity when you realize the doctrine teachings in an open way. I mean, something amazing about Buddhism is that everything that you need. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and for example, like if you, if you, you know, on the ultimate level, there is no God in Buddhism, but at the same time, if you need the God, the deity is a little bit because of ordinary level, well, there is many deities there. <laughs> anyway, so, um, uh, so the thing is, therefore, Vajrasattva on the dimension of, you see, Sambhokaya, and the purity of indestructible energy of enlightenment, really, very much. It's very powerful, most powerful. In, in fact, thinking of Vajrasattva can inspire healing. And Vajrasattva is visualized as like a thousand suns striking a mountain top. It's really brilliant, you know. You think of it as a beautiful, brilliant, white, radiant, like a rainbow, appearing yet empty, like a reflection in the river. And he's no other than the bottom, he's no other than your lama. Your root lama, same as Guru Mbachi, all that, you know, you understand? Thing before you. And then the presence of that, then you make really heartfelt confession. And when you make confession, you just, how do you say, don't conceal anything. You just simply, you know, just open your heart from the long journey to go into I think it's, some ways make it, make it simple. Sometimes this, you know, these guides are, they're not just simply prayers. They guide to meditation. They guide instruction, leading you to the mikpah, which says, I'm my ordinary form. Above my head on a white lotus. And in the center of a moon disk seat. I mean, I can explain what lotus symbolizes. Lotus symbolizes the power of transformation. transformation. And the moon represents compassion saying that I'm coming out of compassion. That's what the seats represent. Why sitting on the, you know, lotus found the dirty swamps, yet it can be completely unstained, that, you know, that purity. And the moon represents the cooling compassion. And there is the letter symbol, Bhung, which represents the wisdom mind of all the Buddhas, which becomes the Lama Vajrasattva. Brilliant white with complete Samboka adornments. And holding Vajra and the bell, they hold the wisdom and compassion, or, you know, I mean, that's, that's many meaning to uh, Bel and Dorje. They are the most powerful symbol of Vajrayana, but I think it's too long to go and describe on this, and we can find it. Word of my perfect teacher. Dorje turns him, holding Vajrayana Bel, embracing the concept of Nyamakamo. Then you say, that's the, that's the power of support. It's really, you think of very inspiringly. And then, of course, as we said throughout, that, you know, as Buddha said, whoever thinks of me, I'm in front of them. And that if whenever we think of Vajrasattva, the amazing thing is they have the wisdom that knows. They know and they're there. Trust they're there. It's very powerful. And empowered. You need to empower with your, with your faith, you know. Faith moves mountains. I mean, I noticed that also with my students. They have so much faith with me. When, when they, I love them, I, I care for them, I teach them very deeply, and then they know the trust, and what I teach works, then they really faith. When you faith, then really they change. Then miracles can happen. There are many, many stories of miracles, which we don't talk about. People who have been long illnesses have been overcome. Many people who have cancer, actually been cured of really the doctors amazed by. And there are many, many stories of, uh, of miracle there, but we don't talk about. So you think of Vajrasattva really inspiringly 
as the embodiment of all the Buddhas you see, as, as your master manifesting, you know, Lama Vajrasattva. Then you say, I take refuge in you, pray, purify all my negative karma, my negative actions, you know. And with deepest regret, I acknowledge them there all and ask for your forgiveness. And saying wholeheartedly, with complete in the heart, you say, remorse. You know, it's like someone who's just drunk, poisoned, and, you know, has such remorse. And has to be open, not concealing anything. Sometimes you can say, all the things that I've done, knowingly or unknowingly, all of them I confess. That's very important in the presence of Vajrasattva. Then say from, that's the second power, a power of regret. The third power is power of resolution. Saying from the power of resolution. From now on, even if my life is stake, I shall refrain from indulging them again. Then power of actual, actual, you know, uh, practice itself is here. Now, of course, the power of regret, the power of resolution comes after the power of regret, but also you can do at the end of the when the purification is effected. Then you say, I shall now be purified, I shall never refrain them again. You make it the resolution also there. So then you say, in your heart, Vajrasattva's heart, upon a full moon. Vajrasattva's body is like a rainbow body, not like our kind of body with liver and lung, all this, I mean, just like a rainbow body, you know? And then in your heart, upon a full moon, is letter Hung, which represents the wisdom. And around that, the mantra mala, Om Banza Sato Samaya Man Palaya Banza Sato Teno Batilan Dudu Meba, Sutu Kayo Meba, Supo Chayo Meba, Anarata Meba, Sarasudu 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 Ha 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 ho banga in the sawata dangat benzer mame manza benz bama samaya satwa written as if you know uh, with a single hair you know you know and the written is in a in a put in an anti clockwise way making a complete sang written by a single hair like a mala but when he moves then he moves clockwise do you understand with the Om taking the lead. So therefore, uh, is letter hung encircled by the mantra. Reciting mantra invokes your wisdom mind. Wisdom mind of, you know, your compassion. And then the, and then from the you know from the point of union blissful yabyum, cloud of bodhicitta nectar, because what comes out from them is a uh, flow bodhicitta, flow down like a shining milk through this, for me and all sentient beings, the three worlds, may all our negative karma, destructive emotions, which are the cause of suffering, illnesses, harmful influences, negative actions and obscurations, along with the wrongdoings, downfalls and blockages due to the breakage of Samaya. That and comes from saying that you let on your they didn't do malish, shun and that so be purified it till not single one remain and then you recite the hundred silver mantra. Now in this nectar flow, if you do very simply, it's like you know, in a very you know, if you make it in a really actual way, as you're reciting the mantra you invoke the wisdom mind of the like the wisdom mind of Vajrasattva, you know. And first, the, as you invoke, the compassion is roused, the wisdom mind is invoked, and slowly from the home, nectar begins to slowly sweat and begin to drip, and all the mantra begin to catch, and then begin to drip, drip, if you do more gradually, dramatically drip, and they fill the body of the, this, uh, the Vajrasattva Yabhyum is completely filled and then it overflows from the point of union and comes through your fontanelle here and comes down and then in it goes and I normally teach this way which is very helpful. First nectar flow is like really washing away all your illnesses in the form of pus, bad blood and tumors. They mean a lot of students doing this Vajrasattva practice really been helped to overcome cancer. Many other, really. 
But sometimes it depends on your lay. Some get completely purified. Others, you know, uh, they get remission. But I think there was one student who was really had a very, very serious uh, abdominal cancer. The doctors actually give up on it. But through change of life and through Vajrasattva and through actually faith in the teachings and the master, they really accordingly. Now he's traveling around actually teaching the method of uh, healing. And as the first nectar flow really purifies, wash away all your illness in the form of pus and bad blood. You understand? And, in the, and tumors and all kinds of virus all washed away. You know, and so that then at the end of the day, the earth opens up the Lord of Yama, the death. Lord of death. You go, and opens up with the mouth with the all coming debtors. They want all your, you know, they want you. And they want you so that you give them, repay your karmic debt, and then, and that all this nectar, you know, this all the flows, purify all this, goes into the mouth of the Lord of Death. And then he's satisfied. Karmic debts are repaid. And he closes his mouth, and then earth closes. And my master, Jamankins, used to say, when you do that practice, it's also a practice of chilu, averting death. Mm. And like sometimes you may have untimely death or obstacles, you can avert them. It's also like a long life practice. It's amazing. And so, and the first nectar flow is purified. Then illness in the form of past bad blood. And then then, like the negative influence in the form of spider or scorpions and all that comes out. And then your delusion and all your, you know, for example, endless harmful influences and negative actions and obscuration come in the form of like soot. You know soot, S-O-O-T, soot and others, no. Soot comes up, they all go purified. Purified. Now the second nectar flow, in terms of healing, is restoring all the imbalances, bringing like almost like the nectar of long life comes into you, heals you, imbalances. It really heals you. First, purifies you, get rid of your illnesses. Second, heals you. And restoring, for example, the cancer is like the certain genes that are bad, then that could be the cause of like these things. And the stem cells, all these things have been. I'm actually writing a kind of a healing practice related to the modern science and medical, how they, you know, and bringing that into the visualization. It's amazing. And so, then that you, you're purified and you're healed. And third is, is the purifying the Samaya. It comes through the four chakras and purifying your Samaya, Tamsik, and then receive the four empowerments. That's very, and then at the end of, then you say, at the end of that, then you say, Hunter Silver Mantra, you recite, Om Bansa Sato Samaya Man Palama Sudim Sudu Gemma Vasuba Jemma Man Ordem Vasas Nima Zodim. Bama Samasato Samasato he can do the nectar flow. And then you can start reciting. I remember once a student, someone who was working as an air hostess, I think it was in, the, in New Zealand. And uh, she was studying with me a little bit. And she was, did, was doing a, a Vajrasattva retreat herself to, in order to, yeah, and she had a kind of cancer in the abdomen. And she did a lot of practice. And practice actually worked for her, but she never kind of actually got healed. So then she asked me what to do. I said, well, not only you practice, while you're practicing session, when you walk around, you practice a set amount. Some tradition said, when you take a shower, you consider there's the nectar flow of Vajrasattva. Mm -hmm. And so she then did that. She did the session, turn, and then she started reciting much. And she was climbing a hill, and there was like a kind of big stone, and she had to you know, climb that. At that point, because some Western people, they're very good in visualizing. They're very feeling. They're very kind of uh, feeling people. They can feel. And suddenly he felt, as he climbed the thing, the nectar gushed through. Something unblocked inside. And she got healed. So it's something very much in everyday life to start doing the mantra. And so then you keep doing that, then, uh, you know, and then at the end, O Protector, Ngombo Dan Mishim Mumbai Tamsil and Ngakin Lama Ngombo Stan, So Dun, 
tu ji chi mi dan ji ju yi chi la dao shan chi ku sung tu zai hen la bu tang zi nian ba tang ji to lo ji di pa de ju ba ni tu chi mi chu tang ji shan ji to ban ji o protect in my ignorant delusion i've gone against and corrupted my samaya lama protect be my refuge chief of all the mandalas vajra holder embodiment of great compassion chief of all living beings in you i take refuge I confess all my impairments of the root and branch samas of body, speech, and mind. I implore you, let all my negative actions, obscurations, wrongdoings, and downfalls, all my flaws, be completely cleansed and purified. Then, at that point, you see, you consider with these words of mine, the Vajrasattva's pleased and smiling says, "O oh, son, daughter of the noble family, in light of them, all your negative actions, obscurations, wrongdoings." And downfalls are purified. She je pe do je samba jigen samba to je pe rich pe je diri ni don je tapa ni no. She na wa shi ke ho te ke ne rana tim be che ne rani je do je samba. No to me no ke zu ni tapa je pe tu so hong ta ma ge ndu ge wa sa wa le. Ho zhen ti kong sun ne je do je pe tam je do sun ri ni ten no ten be rani ge de song je pe ju on ban zo sa do me zo. So you see, vajus hatu wa. Smiling, he forgives you, saying all your, all your, you see, negative action, obscuring, and wrongdoings and downfalls are purified. When I mean, you do it really wholeheartedly, with the power of, you know, the nectar for Vajrasat, really, that's power to purify. Then, then Vajrasat really says to you, now you're purified, you know, smiling, and that sometimes is very powerful, to have, to have that sense of. I remember long ago a student of mine who's who's been a lot of ill in Australia who has now started a healing center. He's quite well known in doing healing work, overcoming cancer. He, I think, went to see I think um, Sai Baba or some great Hindu master. And when you see that you know the master said, "Now you're healed," he said to him such a way that completely changed him. So it's like when you hear what the Sattva is saying to you, you're now healed, purified. Then that gives you such confidence. And you, it's actually everything is the mind, you know. Mm. Mind is really the forerunner of everything. There's so much research that we have come which shows that it's all about mind. There are also many quite extraordinary cases of two women in China, I think, Uh, one had cancer, the other didn't have. The result came the wrong way. So the person who had cancer was told she had no cancer and she got healed. The person who didn't have the cancer was told she had cancer. <laughs> she, she died of cancer. It's really quite extraordinary. And also research has shown that when you pray for people, like in the hospitals, a section of people, of course, they do not know, but section of the People who are ill, you pray for them. Doesn't matter Buddhist, Hindu, Jewish, you know, uh, Christian prayers when they're done. You know, those who are prayed for, they make, they take to treatment much better, and they, they take to, uh, and they heal better. So really, kind of power of prayer, and so. Very much to consider what the Sattva says, smiling, you're, you're purified. And at that point, you know, granting his forgiveness, he melts into light and then becomes one with you. And then you become Vajrasattva, appearing yet empty like a reflection in the mantra. And at your heart is the, the mantra mala, the Om Vajrasattva Hum. Appearing yet empty like a reflection. At your heart, Is a hung around which for brilliant radiant syllable, Om Vajra Sato Hung. You know, Sanskrit way of pronouncing the mantra and the Tibetan way of pronouncing also. I think the Tibetan way of pronouncing is actually a little bit not that uh, accurate, but it really wants this great master, you know, Atisha Dipankar was a great pundit. He wanted to actually reform the Tibetan pronunciation. Uh, but then he had an Abscess, you know, teeth. and he brought a group of monks who invited to do Dojinamjam purification. 
and they were reciting all the mantras, and they were so hilarious. We pronounced was completely, and in the middle of it, he, heard, he just burst out laughing, and he got cured. And he, since then, he said, don't correct. <laughs> That's the way. <laughs> so even the uh, uh, mantras are not very, you know. There was also a great master who was practicing Vajrakula up in the mountains. He was really great to realize, great accomplished, to, you know, attained. And so then the stream flowing down and one very conscientious scholar was going there and he he hit the river stream saying, Om Banja Chili Chila, Om Banja Chili Chila, it's Om Banja Chili Chila. And he said, oh, this will not do. We must go and correct it. <laughs> so he went up there. <laughs> because some of them, the old text, the Chili Chila is a bit almost like a Yata and may sound like Chili Chila. So since he was, that this, uh, this yogi was not really, Nanjupa was not really educated, so he would just kind of say, Om Banja Chili Chila. Then we said, oh, look here, you know, this will not do. It's not chili chilaya, it's kili chilaya. <laughs> and this <laughs> yogi, you know, Nanjabi, he took his dagger, purba, and stabbed the rock like a uh, knife in the butter. He said, I don't know about chili chilaya or chili chilaya butter, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it's not so much, it's with fate. And if you do that, and then you see, then from the mouth to mouth, tremendous rays of light go, whereby the three worlds and the whole of the universe, environment beings, it in enlightenment together in the Buddha fields of the Buddhas of the Fam Pam Vajrasattva. And so that these the radiant rays and then purifying all beings and environment beings, and all environment becomes the heaven of Vajrasattva, all beings purify into Vajrasattva. And then you say, through the positive merit of this, may I swiftly attain the realization of Vajrasattva, thereby every single sentient being reach the state of that perfection too. And so then here, at that point you see, I mean, so then finally all the environment dissolves into Vajrasattva. And Vajrasattva all dissolves into you. And you also dissolve into Mantra Mala. Mantra Mala also dissolve from backwards until Hong. Hong also dissolve from the bottom to the top into the main body. And finally all dissolve into the ultimate nature, into the state of the absolute, into the state of nature mind or state of the Rang Yung Rik Nyi Hi. And when you realize that that is the absolute Vajrasattva. Then you rise from the gain for the benefit of all beings and dedicate the merits. So that is a quite a thorough Vajrasattva. Yes. Whereas the mandala offering is very, I make it very simple. Mandala is center in the circumference. Often it's kind of, when you, people have done Vaj, a mandala offering, they kind of overcome territoriality and just become really, it's letting go of your, your world, you and, you know, Attachment to yourself and all your belongings, possessions, really, I think just really offering everything, offering, surrendering, offering, which is the accumulation of merit and wisdom, which is basically, is like a offering your world, all that is you attached, all that you can even offering all your negative emotions also, <laughs> that way also, all your attachment, those you really completely attach to, and everything you offer, you surrender, you offer. So, since we are already uh, taken so much time in this uh, mandala teachings, I think mandala offering, I leave it till there, so that maybe in future ones I will. Uh, I will reflect on it and just share a little bit of mandala offering, maybe. Thank you. But the final thing is the Guru Yoga, which is heart of Vajrayana. In fact, really, many, I think I tell my students also, and many of the great masters, like, you know, Kansarambachi, like Jigmed Lingpa, Longchen Rabjam, 
and then patrons all these must really they're very much like charam but very much you know really main thing is even doing more like main practice of you know jezo doing guru yoga doing guru yoga and doing like almost if you can 100 minimum amount of of guru yoga guru yoga is the most important guru yoga lamen nanjo it's like something to describe as the really if you want to realize the ultimate nature the best way to realize the ultimate nature the absolute is true the medium of practice of guru yoga guru yoga very simply for me guru yoga is the gurumshe who's the embodiment of compassion blessing of buddhas and that's same as my master jamen kenshi tengo kenshi mche jab ji dunyo mche all of them you visualize them in the front of you traditionally you consider them it's your tarama but in the form of your in the form of guru mche but actually according to like you know some traditions you can consider your master really as himself like in the, in the case of especially like jamen kenshi chuchuru or tengo kenshi but just think themselves is for me they are the buddhas so guru yoga really very much first of all you in book in the sky before you the embodiment of all the masters the embodiment of compassion blessing of the, in the person of guru mche same as your master for me and then you book with seven night prayer see them so they you really book them and then in the more elaborate form of guru yoga you can do the seven branch offerings yena dumba which is a practice of actually accumulation of merit and wisdom and there the prostration cha is in that also sometimes dalu shing dunya the number to be cha cha no shing no jib cha jib go so migila na go so chicken on my entire perception is spontaneous perfect in the realm of infinite purity rana lumbu tabaran jam shi ko para to sundu parvi rani gili do jin nanjurma my entire perception spontaneous perfect is the infinite purity the copper color mountain of glory the sandopadi arrayed complete in perfect detail here in its center my own body in the vajrayogini with one face two hands brilliant holding hooked knife and skull and my two feet gracefully poised my three eyes gazing into sky and baba my head on a blossoming 100000 petal lotus of sun and the moon is the inseparable from my own root master the lama the embodiment of source of refuge or refuge it appears gurumbuche in the supreme nimanaka form of you know uh, lake bon vajra sochi doje his body glow with youthful white with the tinge of red which represent the union of bliss and emptiness and he wears the gown the monastic shawl uh cloak and robes and one face two hands seated in a, a royal poise in his right hand he holds the vajra in his left a skull cup containing the vase of immortality on his head he wears the five petal the lotus hat cradled in his left arm holds the supreme concert of bliss and emptiness clear concealed as the three pointed karamka trident and it presides amid the shimmering aura of rays of or rays and rings of rainbow light around him enveloped in the beautiful lace lattice a white blue yellow red and green light are the king to son deten and also you know the like 25 disciples go jamunyanga all the pandit siddhas and the vijayadaras of india and, and tibet and the idam deities and all the dakinis damapalas protectors who keep the samaya all gather like a blowing clouds visualize vivid distinct in the great equality of clarity and emptiness so very much you see you visualize 
in the sky before you. Basically, your own perception purified is the, is the heaven. Your own purified. And then yourself, Vajrayogini. The reason why Dujumbuchi used to say, why do you visualize yourself as your Vajrayogini or in the form of Yeshe Togyal? Because Yeshe Togyal had an extraordinary link with Guru Mbache. Yeshe Sojya is in fact Guru Mbache's supreme disciple. And the power of her devotion, if you look into the life of Yeshe Sojya, you're so inspiring. I think for women, you know, I think it's very important to know that Guru Mbache's main lineage holder is Yeshe Sojya. She's a woman. She's a great lady. And she has an extraordinary, you know, uh, devotion, and she is a perfect disciple. And because she had such a devotion and, you know, such extraordinary karmic link and connect with Guru Mbache, so that you visualize with Guru Mbache is like, may I be as close to Guru Mbache as you should talk. It's creating the temple. Huh? Secret intimacy that exists. Or secret intimacy or that that they're close. Heart or you know that connection. Tender. I remember the Jim used to say, when when your love when your lover calls you, when your wife or someone calls you darling and calls your name, you just immediately your eyes turn and go like that. So when you become like a hit, so again, you call out Guru Mbache, Guru Mbache is more. <laughs> well, in a sense that you have that, you know. It's the whole, more simply, you assume the body of devotion. You become as devoted as your connection, as pure, as, 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 as receptive, as open as you so again. So that then you become a receptive vessel for his teachings, to create that heart connection. And then you Guru Mbache. All the attributes are a little bit too elaborate. You can look into the other Gundra teachings. And you visualize. And then you invoke with the seven nine prayer. And Guru Mbache, then 25 disciples, and all the pandits, the masters of, you know, of India, Tibet. And that, you know, you can, even when you you can consider the masters of all lineage. If you do even the long journey, the Ngundro or the Ngundro Nyingma, you can consider the masters of the different lineages also there, very much. That's how I always approach that way. And then you do the seven night prayer. And then after seven night prayer, then you do the seven branch devotional practice. Like for example, first is prostration. As many times as atoms in the universe are multiplied by my body, and offer prostration, which is against pride. Will come in pride. Then you see, with both real offerings and those created through mind, to the power of samadhi or meditation, offer the entire universe. You see, uh, I offer the entire universe in one vast gesture of offering. And it's an antidote. Offering is an antidote to greed. Attachment, greed, and meanness, and poverty mentality. The next is confession. Confession is an antidote to aggression and anger, you know. He says, all the harmful actions of my body, speech, mind, are confessed and purified in the luminosity of Dhammaka. Then rejoicing, which is the fourth, which is... Antidote to envy and jealousy. Whatever there may be relative absolute, I rejoice in all the positive virtuous actions. Then imploring the Buddhas to turn the wheel of Dharma. According to the receptive needs of different beings, I implore you to turn the wheel of Dharma of the three anas. Which is antidote to 
ignorance. And next is requesting Buddhas and teachers to remain, you know, in the world, not really feel, you know, disillusioned and retire into nirvana. It's like antidote to wrong views. And finally, dedication is antidote to uncertainty or doubts. These are all the seven branches can be related to the overcoming of these different uh, uh, negative emotions. So you say, and then till samsara is completely empty, all beings liberated, do not pass into nirvana, but remain here among us, I pray. Then all the merits of positive action, the past, present, future, I dedicate that all beings may attain supreme enlightenment. And then you make a really hard fed prayer saying, O oh, Guru Mbachi, precious one, you are the embodiment of compassion, blessing of all the Buddhas, the only protector of beings. My body, my possession, my heart and soul, without hesitation, I surrender to you. From now on, until I attain enlightenment, in happiness or sorrow, in circumstances or oh, uh, circumstances, good or bad, situation, high or low, I just completely rely on. This is called you know, you know, in happiness, sorrow, where the happiness comes is your blessing. If suffering comes, it's also your blessing to purify me. So you know, complete reliance. You know, complete reliance. In all I rely on you, complete surrendering. It's really important. Then you recite the mantra of Guru Bhichi Heart Essence. Then next is, you know, if you're going to recite like a thousand mantra, then you do hundred and then do one prayer, oh Guru Bhichi Precious One, one mala, and then you say that prayer again, a hundred mala, and you so therefore you say five times the first prayer. Then the second prayer says, I have no one else to turn to. In these evil times, the beings of Akkali Yuga sinking in a swamp of intense and unbearable suffering free us from this ogre. I always think, especially with the, those students of mine or those people going through suffering and confusion difficulties, I invoke this one. And saying, you know, free us from this, O great Guru. Grant us the four empowerments, O blessed one. Direct your realizing into our, our minds, O compassionate one. Please purify all my emotional and cognitive obscurations, O powerful. O Mahumbanda Guru Master. Then at the end you say, I pray to you from the depth of my heart. It's not just words or empty mouthings. Grant your blessings from the depth of your wisdom mind and cause all my good aspects to be fulfilled. Then sometimes we can, in the longer version, you do the uh, prayer to the lineage, invoking all the masters in prayer for this life, yes. next life in the Pardos. It's very beautiful, really beautiful. And then at the end of that, then you receive the blessing, the empowerment from Guru Mbache's forehead, throat and heart. White om, red a, uh, blue hung. From there, tremendous rays of blessings come as they touch at three centers. It purifies, it touches, om touches a void, it purifies all the negative karma and uh, all the obstacles connect with the body. And purified, we receive the blessing of the body of wisdom body of Guru Mbachi. And as it touches the, the throat, uh, purify our speech, all our negative. Uh, of like uh, harsh words, lies, slander, gossip, all these things. With the body one is, you know, this uh, taking lives, uh, then stealing and sexual misconduct. Or, and the mind, you know, it touches the heart, it purifies all the negative karma, it connects with avarice, then, you know, and malice, and, 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 you know, and wrong views, like they purified. So we see basically purify all your body, speech, mind, and purifies more in your channels also, in inner air and energy, Talung Tigle, Nadi Prana Bindu, and then also very much, I mean, they, there's an elaborate form. You can look into the Tibetan Book of Living Dying, the Guru Yoga section, and then you can just quote a little bit from that if you like, in order to, you know, make it a little bit more, you know, just, you can improvise that, you know? And to so make it a little bit more clear, 
so that the 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 as the hung that is it purifies all the uh, impurities of your mind and then you know and then you receive the blessing with the mind of Gurumsi. Basically your body is purified, speech mind is purified and you receive the blessing Vajra body, Vajra speech, Vajra mind of Gurumsi. And that's really and then that's also receiving the empowerment is also purifying your samaya. Receiving Doing the empowerment every day is purifying your samaya, a connection. Tamsik, you very much. And so at the end of that, then Lama dissolves into light, becomes one with you. Then recognize your ultimate nature mind, the state of Rikpa as the absolute Lama. There is, in the long Jinjing thing, uh, there's a beautiful, simple, which is something like a poa also. There's also prayer for Ochili for next life when you die, you know. It says, when my life is in an end, with my entire perception, you know, becomes a heavenly guru The Nimanaka, pure land of fear and emptiness, my body, Vajrayogini, is transformed into a radiant, shimmering sphere of light and merges inseparably with the Guru Mbache, Padmasambhava, and I shall attain Buddhahood with him. Then from the play of the vast primordial wisdom, which is the miraculous manifestation of bliss and emptiness, and for every single being in the three realms, let me appear as their guide, to lead them to liberation. O Jitsun Pema Guru Mache, grant me, I pray. Is that you attain enlightenment, then you may emanate again in order to, em, many emanations in order to help beings. And then the very powerful, I visualize myself clearly as Vajrayogini, and from the heart center of the Lama, a beam of light, red, warm, suddenly burst out and touches my heart instantly, instantaneously. I am transformed into a sphere of red light, a size of a P, P-E-A, not P-E-E, -E, which shoots out toward the Padmasambhava, Gurumbachi, like a spark that spits from a fire, and it dissolves into Gurumbachi's heart, merges and becomes one in between in one day. Then you rest in the ultimate meditation, Dzogchen meditation, or Mahabha meditation. Then when you rise from that, you say, Oh, glory, Tzala Lama, precious one, dwell on the lotus seat in the depth of my heart. Look upon me the grace of great compassion. Grant me the attainment of the body, speech, and mind. So that really, at night, you remain in your heart, transforming the sleep, you know, darkness of sleep into the luminosity of light. You know, so then that's like the day practice night at night Lama is in your heart. And when you rise in the morning then you say, Oh Lama, care for me from the blossoming lotus of devotion and the center of my heart. Rise of compassion Lama, my only refuge. I'm plagued by passing to him and remain in the crown. You my head arousing mindful and awareness of a Lama rises, ascend through his his private lift central channel and remains there guiding you through mindfulness and awareness. So it's a complete cycle. And at the end that you dedicate the merits. Merits is important, very, very important dedicating. You always say, best of dedication is the jis lope moa. Just saying, you know, for example, just as Bodhisattva Manjushri knew this way and also Samanda Buddha too, I shall follow in the footsteps of bodhisattvas, make perfect dedication of these merits. That Jambar Pari, Chitan Chambal, Kundu Zambo, Teon, Teda Kunji Jis, Gyawan Teda Tamti Rat. As all the Buddhas of past, present, future praise the dedication merit as supreme, all the source of merit I dedicate completely so that uh, all may perfect Samantha Buddha's good action. 
If you dedicate the merit, then they will not be exalted. Otherwise, if merit is not dedicated, then you see if like anger or any negative emotion rises, it can, you know, uh, destroy them. And also, when uh, when like anger comes, it can destroy them. Or like for example, if you make offering to the monasteries and you go where you get really kind of uh, inspire others, you just open your pocket and you just start giving them hundred, you know, multa rupees, and, and then afterwards you go back to your home and just look at your pocket and say, I shouldn't have that, given that much. It's uh, your merit is gone. The one thing is through anger and through kind of regret that, you know, you should really, whatever you offer, with wholehearted and then surrender. And then also if you show off, it's not good. In fact, there was this great master, uh, Kembongakchum, in Kham region in Tibet. There are a lot of Tibetan people, Kamba people, they do a lot of mantras. A lot of money, they sometimes do a hundred million, Two hundred million tungchi tungni. So Kampas are not very respectful. They're kind of you know quite direct. He came to Kembo Ngakshu and said, "Oh, Kembo Tsang said, you know, I've done hundred million mantra. I tungchi man tungchi. I did hundred million mantra. Oh, money pay me home." Kembo didn't budge. Then he said a little loudly, "Kembo Tsang, I did hundred million mantra." Kembo didn't even respond at all. And finally, just even, you know, did you not hear me? I said, I've done hundred million mantras. To, and Kembo Ngachun just looked at him and said, what a pity. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's showing off. Yeah. Never show off. Yeah. So at that point, we conclude. At the end of it, unfortunately, it was a little bit, um, uh, we moved a little bit swiftly, and particularly receiving the empowerment was not that complete. So please, uh, if you can uh, look into the Dependent Book of Living Dying, there's a section on the four empowerments. Uh, it's quite good that you can even read that, if you may. I'll give you the permission to do so. Thank you very much. I would have to request a small, uh, because in Bhutan we have this saying that Chue Sab Sab Tu Sab. So Sri Moche has been so kind to give such powerful, the full practice of Nyandro inner and outer. So a small Tumin um, uh, to clear obstacles for this program as well. I would pray. I would pray for you. Really. I think the most, most important thing is, is good motivation. And pure pure motivation and then also not to be if you if you really if you you know always well advised and always you see the true motivation and genuinely to benefit beings and the dharma and i think then you know don't worry Buddhist people are really quite extraordinary there you know i remember Nyushin Kanba used to say Sometimes, you know, among practitioners of Dzogchen, you know, Bhutani sometimes practitioners have much more, you know, experience, you know, than Tibetans used to say. But they're really good practitioners, good chupa. Especially the Bhutanese people are so kind of um, devoted to the Dharma, really. And then the young also have a truly enthusiasm of Dharma. But I think it's like, um, there's a little bit of confusion, to say the least. And that I think uh, we need to really explain. I mean, particularly when, you know, you, um, when the teachings are not explained, when, you know, there's, there's just ceremonies and we see the forms, the monastery doing a lot of prayers, and which you do not understand. And when the teachings are traditionally offered, uh, you don't, don't quite comprehend. And it don't reach to you, don't speak to you, then I think, you know, we, we turn away.
Similarly, many of my friends, school friends also, when they really read my book, then they really find what Buddha Dhamma is, you know, really. Because I think we need to explain. We need to explain. To cut the story short, I think we need to explain. And so we need to explain about, for example, like even when you do prayers, what do they mean? What the different deities mean, like Chenresi, Jitsun Duma, all these things. So, I mean, I've been coming to Bhutan now for a number of years, offering some teachings that I feel in future I would like, if I may, and we should encourage all other masters also to really, all these questions and things that trouble and who they, uh, uh, you know, the youth have a problem with or they do not understand, we need to actually explain that in a simple way and really bring understanding. If you really bring understanding that the Buddha Dhamma is extraordinary, really. I've been everywhere and seen many things, but nowhere I find something greater than the Dhamma, really. I've made many religions also. Uh, they're all great, but I mean, so profound is the Buddha Dhamma. It's a pity if you, without not knowing the true value of the Dhamma, and you turn away, you know, follow something else. It's like, you know, if you, if you kind of go a kind of, how do you say, hungry and stuff, while you realize that below your, underneath your house, there's a whole treasury of wisdom, you know, treasury, you know, of wealth there, you know, it's a, such a pity. So I would encourage to be patient and to be more, have discussions and, you know, about to inquire and the questions that there are to ask for and like programs for you too that very much people can ask what they would like to know and to make a systematic ways to really, really to explain like if, if I were invited to come back to Bhutan and teach if I do I would like to really tackle these things you know on hand about the issues of the practice Systematically, I've been teaching on Mundo, but other things, more practical things. At the same time, there are also many things like substance abuse, as well as people facing, uh, uh, like, for example, suicide tendencies, because they become desperate and lose hope. And for that, really, we need to also deal with these things, really, uh, work with psychology and emotional problems of people. We need to really deal with that. And that's why. Actually, I have developed a kind of a, uh, a kind of website which is called the Treasury of Wisdom, which I might let make it available here in Bhutan. Uh, and in that, there are a lot of. It's an ongoing thing. It's not complete, but ongoing thing. There are also teachings on working with emotions, about relationships, all kinds of subjects, bringing up children education of children, all kinds of subjects, but also uh, how to prevent suicide and, you know, how to help people who are, you know. And all these things, you know, also, sometimes also about relationship, many things. I feel this, uh, we, you need that. You need that something kind of they can tap into and find like a, some answer that can maybe at least keep them, you know, but then we need more human contact. It's not just the, that we need, like, the social work, you know. I feel um, among the young people, those who really for care for others who are suffering, would really good, more social work of bringing the teachings and translating them into. Because, for example, I have a lot of students who are really great therapists. They are, you know, being totally trained. But they also practice Dharma. And bringing Dharma, Dharmic therapy, is really quite amazing. So that way of the social action. And uh, to pray also, uh, like for example, the, now the many of the, like the Christian, you know, Christ, in the Christianity, many of the monks actually work in social service. We need also the monks and the practitioners who work in that. You know, for example, my students, they work in the care, in the, uh, care for the dying very much. And then, and among ourselves also, we very much, whenever somebody's ill, we, you know, go and help them. When they're lonely, go to talk to them. When they're friendless, just, you know, and really, but not in an imposing way, but in a very sensitive way, care for them. And know that some they're not alone, you know, to really be. And then they also, when they have, they, 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 and they bring their problems to me so that I can personally intervene and care 
And then really it's so much, you know, people are so grateful that kind of care, community support, we need very much, really need very much. Community support and supporting each other, young people supporting in that kind of social groups of that kind and really helping each other, finding teachings. And then a lot of, sometimes there are a lot of compassionate people, a lot of kind people, warm people, you know. Sometimes when I talk about dying people, when one might be good in taking care of making a tea. Other may be just listening to you, you know. Others are more practical, others are medical. Or so that way, the group working together to helping the youth, people who are in need or are suffering. Therefore, I think I feel that's something you know, we need. And I think I don't lose heart. I think, you know, uh, I, when I, when, I, uh, when I come, I will try to also address these things a little bit, if I, if I may. Uh, if I may, and then these websites available. And I think only thing is I would like to inspire you to kind of like a, for you to move in the direction and to really help each other. Because Buddhism, the teachings are so rich. They are all said, Pendenju in that. You put Temba in your name. Temba is because Pendenju. Dharma is the source of all benefit, all that good source. Of and that's why we say may the Dharma remain, because the source of source of all benefit, source of all good. And we need to therefore, you know, uncover that, reveal the truth and the true value of this. And then, you know, it's it's a pity you have that and then if you go kind of, you know, ignore it or you know, it's such a pity. That's my I'm sorry I'm a little bit tired, so I'm not very eloquent, but I think that's my appeal very much and that um, I will do whatever I can because I do uh, love the country and the people who are wonderful and I have many students, many, I mean some few students, I have few students but a lot of people when they come to the teaching they show such enthusiasm, such devotion, such openness, I'm really moved by them. So I wish them all very well, you know, and really I hope these teachings help you a little bit, inspire you, give you courage and hope to not only help yourself, help others. We would like to thank Rimochela for um, putting words to this wordless wisdom and for putting the sky into our shoulder. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Taka. Whatever I do, it's really indeed, uh, it's also for me, it's tremendous merit also. And then I offer this to the my masters that can, so that the gongzu, so the fulfillment of their aspirations for the beings, and also dedicate for the for the people of Bhutan and for His Majesties, really, for their good health, for the uh, fulfillment of their aspiration, for the well-being of the country, and that I really wish all well, you know, and really dedicate that. Thank you. I would like to thank all the viewers for watching and this show has been made possible because of Rinpoche's graciousness and kindness. Uh, this uh, show on Yendro practice was also a request from the viewers. Don't forget our Chanchu Shing slogan, Analyze and Realize.